How to Use Enterprise Library 5 with Visual Studio 2019. First we need to download Enterprise Library 5. Select the MSI, click Next. Open the MSI, click Next. Accept the license agreement, click Next. Click Next. This library takes 8 megabytes, click Next. And install the library. And click Finish. Next thing we want to do is to download the Enterprise Library Config Console. So we can go to Visual Studio Marketplace and download the extension. Just search for Enterprise Library. Select the config. And download the config. You can open this configuration. As you can see, it's not installable on any of the current versions of Visual Studio installed on the machine. But we can change that. Here's our VSIX file. Go to View, Show File Name Extensions. Now we can edit that extension, make it a zip. Yes, we're sure we want to change the extension. We can right click on the file and extract all. Now we can see all the files within this package. And next, we want to edit the extension.vix manifest file. So open it with any editor that you like. So here's the configuration file that we need to change to support Visual Studio 2013 and above. So the current file has support for Visual Studio's 2010 and Visual Studio 2012. If you're using Visual Studio 2017 and below, you can simply edit this file by just copying these sections. So let's copy this change the version to 12, and now we have support for Visual Studio 2013. Copy it again, change it to 14, and now we have support for Visual Studio 2015. Copy and paste it again, change Ultimate to Enterprise, and the version to 15. Now we have support for Visual Studio 2017. However, even if we add version 16 for Visual Studio 2019, it will not show up as a supported version. We will have to change this file from VSIX version 1 to version 2 to support Visual Studio 2019. So let's save this manifest and show you where we're at right now. So if you're using Visual Studio 2017 and below, you can highlight all your files. Go to Send to Compress Zip Folder. Change it to VSIX. Double click the file. So we have our checkbox check to install on Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. So we click install. So the installer is saying that it's not compatible with Visual Studio 2019. So we have to change our extension.vsix manifest file. So we can simply delete the one we just created. So now let's open Visual Studio 2019 and create a new project. We're going to select extensions. If you don't have it installed, we can install it. So here are all the features that we have installed for Visual Studio 2019. Simply check Visual Studio Extension Development and add it. Note you do not have to do any of this. I'm just doing this to show you how to get a default manifest file. So let's modify Visual Studio. Once installed, we can launch Visual Studio. Create a new project. Now you can see all the extension projects. So let's just create a new VSIX project and create our project. Let's look at the source code for our generated manifest file. As you can see, this manifest file is version 2, and because it has the prerequisite section, it is version 3. So let's remove the prerequisite section. Let's open our existing manifest. As you can see, our existing manifest is version 1. Now let's compare our manifest and make updates where needed. Let's change the author. Let's change the identifier. Let's change the display name, the description. Let's add the license and icon. And finally, let's add our package. Paste that in there. Paste that in there. Let's update the version number. Now let's copy what we just made. 
and paste it into the original file. Save the original file. Highlight all our files, right click, send to, compress zip folder. Change that to VSIX. And run it. Now we can install the package on Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. It successfully updated Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. Close the window. Let's launch Visual Studio. To make sure it's working, let's create a new web project. Let's select Web, ASP.NET Web Application for .NET Framework. Let's create our web application. Let's select a Web Forms application. Click Create. You can see Visual Studio is warning us that this is a non-asynchronous extension. Let's allow synchronous autoload, and we have to restart Visual Studio. As you can see, it's giving us the warning message again that this is not an asynchronous extension. Just close that. Now if we go to our web config and right click on it, you will see here's our extension. So let's click Edit Server Configuration File, and it gives us an error message saying that we have to set up our solution to point to the Microsoft Enterprise Library. So select your solution, and we're going to paste in the default path there. The default path for the setup is C slash Program Files 86 Microsoft Enterprise Library 5 slash bin. And now if we right click on our web config and click Edit Server Configuration File, our extension will launch. As you can see, we have our application settings and our database settings. Let's add some references to the Microsoft Enterprise Library. Go to the bin folder with all the DLLs. Select Microsoft Practices Enterprise Library Common DLL. Click Add. Let's add the Unity DLL. Add the Microsoft.Practices that Service Location DLL. Let's add the Commonly Used Logging DLL and the Commonly Used Policy Injection DLL. Click OK. Let's add the Microsoft Practices Unity Interception DLL. Let's right click on our web config and look at our extension. See we have application settings, database settings. If we go to blocks, we can add logging settings. We can add policy injection settings. Close out our window. We can save our configuration. Open up our web config and we can see that it added the policy injection, the logging configuration, and everything is working as expected. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.